Hello, I'm Fantastic and Fantastic, and say I'm playing through the brand new Spring Fest Arena Super Decisive Battle with my Akuma Plus Diablos team. So the idea of this team and dungeon is that it's basically a training arena with more rank experience at the end. More well, it's not more rank experience, monster experience. So I'm bringing this card here, Valkyrie. She's got a weird inherit because of the ranking dungeon, but basically she's not level 110, and she's going to gain 7 million monster experience at the end of this dungeon. So you want to bring a team that can clear the dungeon. It has modest difficulty, I would say. I, this is going to be my first playthrough, but just look, taking a look at the dungeon, I feel like it has modest difficulty overall. So this is kind of similar to one of my like Arena 5 teams. So I have 100% Poison Resist, and... That is important because there is going to be a Beelzebub preemptive in the dungeon. So let's see if I can remember how to play with non-Zeus verse teams. Okay, just kind of getting into the swing of things. And for the most part, this dungeon doesn't have too many hurdles. I would say like there's a preemptive full board poison and a boss of 150 million health. So nothing too outrageous. But there is going to be a sizable combo shield at the very end. So using a 7x6 board obviously makes that a little bit easier. I still need to kind of get into the swing of actually making more than one combo now. Alright. So I'm pretty sure there will be much faster teams available for this dungeon. But again, this is going to be my first clear, so we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> and I do actually have guard break just by coincidence, actually it wasn't even intentional. So I'm going to might as well use the Hiei because I don't feel like I need anything else. And... Like, I might as well just enjoy some extra skyfalls of colors I actually do appreciate. Oops, that's a weird looking L. Oh, there's a resolve! I'm supposed to actually over- okay. Well, that's not how you overcome resolves. And hello, Queen Kiji. This is the new arena that just got released a couple of moments ago. Okay, so, uh, there is a resolve, but luckily it is a non-lethal resolve. So, don't do what I did there. And hello, I forgot my pants today. How are you doing today? Welcome back to the stream. So he's going to make jammers, but I resisted it. I do happen to have resist, like I said. I'm using a team that has cleared high-level content, so I just didn't have to change too many things to incorporate all the mechanics I need to counter. But the main one you need to have is Poison Resist, or at least enough board changes available. And could have been bad, what do you mean by that? I forgot my pants today. What floor is this? Shouldn't be important what floor this is yet. Queen Kiji, did you play this already in JP? I presume you did then. Because I don't think it's supposed to be that hard. Like, I just took a look at it in advance, and it doesn't look exceptionally difficult. Like, it's only a poison preemptive and a full... Um, a poison preemptive plus a full... No, sorry, 153 million health. 15 turn. I'm going to pop Yomi, because I do want to have an Awoken Bind clear at some point. I just realized my Valkyrie's Useless Inherit, because it's for Ranking Dungeon, has come up. So, that's not good. This reminds me of Endless Corridor, some of these spawns. Oh yeah, I forgot my pants. The Resolve could definitely have made my life much worse than it was. Thankfully, it was a... What I kind of like to call fake resolves because you don't die, which is nice. Like, it could definitely have turned out much worse. Hey, that was better. I do have more movement time, though. But I, I popped Yomi preemptively because 
I'm going to need to have Yomi's active later to clear some Awoken Binds just to go faster. And thank you very much to Grey Ninja for becoming a fantastic follower. Yep, I remember Shiva from, like, various arenas. I don't know why I'm making this so much harder than it needs to be. And hey, Grey Ninja, I'm glad you hit that button regardless of when you hit it. Owen Bob, why would I want to do that? I actually hurt my finger at some point in couple years ago and it just never healed and that's why I actually swapped to a stylus. It's an unfortunate scenario, but I feel like my body has issues. I didn't actually do that properly, but apparently everything in this dungeon has no health anyways. Alright, so there is a real resolve, and by I say real, I mean it actually will be annoying. Unfortunately, I don't have hearts, but at the same time, I won't die because I have damage reduction. So I'm just going to pretend it's not a resolve and just play like I normally would. Like, I do have a sizable amount of damage reduction, so I'll be fine. What comes after this? So if you play a team with no damage reduction, that resolve is actually lethal. But in my case, I fortunately do not have to worry. So I'm healed back up. I'm surprised I didn't have five hard orb, six hard orbs. Okay, that looks nice. This dungeon is 18 floors, so it's kind of like an arena, but I feel like it's definitely scaled down in terms of difficulty a bit. Alright, a little bit of delay here. So this Tamadra only has 5 million defense. It's not like training arena where it has a stupendously high amount, so I do have guard break, but that was just by coincidence, because I was just throwing this team together. Guard break is not necessary for this. 5 million defense should be no problem for most strong teams. Got a physical killer. And amusingly enough, physical killer has actually become something I want more of because I tend to use lots of them up during ranking dungeons for some reason. I think it's because I just throw them on so many different cards and I just need to have those physical killers to punch through to cheese through mechanics. That's why this Valkyrie... Oh, she doesn't have physical killers, never mind. But sometimes I get physical kill killer latents to Valkyrie. So this is where I want to have Awoken Bind clearing. It just overrides this... It's not necessary, it's only three turns. It shouldn't be really a lethal issue, but again, why not make your life a little bit easier if you're planning to play this dungeon, especially more than once. Make an L for absolutely no reason. All right, smashing through. Floor 15's down of 16. So this is where there's a poison preemptive. And this is why you want poison resist, because you save yourself a board changer. Okay, those will cascade a bit more into position. Excellent. Exactly, I forgot my pants, that's why. Oh, and Bob, because I don't own Gilgamesh, and I'd rather play Diabolus because it's just easier to play with. Alright, Poison Resist again helps there, so more reasons to have Poison Resist. Oh, I missed the wood there on the side, it's okay. There's more than enough combos anyways. And that's partially why, because I'm playing... Like, this dungeon isn't super, super difficult, Owen Bob, and 
by having that easier activation just makes life more pleasant. Okay, so we fight Rex, and Rex has a large combo shield. And the thing is, the combo shield shouldn't be an issue when I play 7x6. So I have actives. I'm going to pop the compressed air bubble to get a nicer board. And you know what? I might as well just pop my actives. I can pop a gravity. I can pop my other gravity. Why not? Woof! I've almost killed it. So that's completely unnecessary. You don't need to do it. It just happened to be the actives I had on my team. I'm not doing this very well in terms of solving. I missed those hearts on the side. Whoops. But the thing is, things cascade down. Some skyfalls happen. It's going to die. Like, I did more. It has only 150 million health. So a lot of things can one shot it. But by using 7x6, just makes it a little bit easier because I don't have to worry about the 9 combo shield for one turn. You can bring plus combo counts. You can bring bi colors. There's many ways to overcome this. Like, this is not supposed to be a super hard dungeon. I feel it's supposed to be a dungeon you're supposed to play on a regular basis because you get 7 million monster experience. So you get. Extreme King Metal Dragon and a Latent of a random variety. And I got a Physical Killer, which is one of the better ones in my opinion, at least. And there you go. Valkyrie actually gained two levels because she was 100 plus some change. So with the 7 million, she gained from 100 to 102. And in addition to getting one Magic Stone, 7 million monster points, a random Latent, you also will be gifted in the mail a special one-time clear roll at the Super... At the Spring Fest Super God Fest. That just sounds unusual. But apparently this machine has the same lineup, but at different rates. I'm pretty sure Gung Ho would give you like 0% chance of rolling something good from here. But of course, anything can happen. And I will do my roll right now on stream slash video for YouTube. So let's pray for something amazing. So it could be anything from the current God Fest, which is not that great. I would keep saving your magic stones because there's going to be the Gung Ho Club God Fest. And not what I was hoping for, unfortunately, but it's not. It's something I think I don't have, so I'll take it. So let me know what you rolled in the comments below. Do you think this is an enjoyable dungeon? Do you plan on playing this dungeon over and over again to actually max level your cards? Remember, 7 million monster experience is important for trying to raise a card from level 100 to 110 because they require 5 million experience per level, and there's 10 levels, so 50 million total. So you can level up your cards without using snow globes. So hopefully all a fantastic day. I wish you all the best luck in your own pad adventures, and happy puzzling.